Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Hello and welcome to this episode of Influential Entrepreneurs. This is Mike Saunders, the Authority Positioning Coach. Today we have back with us Chris Blair, who's the founder of Maestro Associates, a Denver flat fee financial planning firm. And today we're talking about estate planning. Chris, welcome back to the program. Thank you, Mike. Glad to be here, as always. Hey, so I, I know that estate planning is quite the broad term, and I know we want to talk about, you know, what you should think, pros, cons, what if you do it, what if you don't. So let's just kind of dive right in and, and even just define what actually entails estate planning. Well, there's two levels of estate planning, and, and just to be dark, one of them is post-death. If mm-hmm. someone passes away, um, estate planning essentially helps determine what happens to their property, their assets. Uh, But there are also components that need to be addressed in estate planning for prior to death. Who manages the, uh, the, the assets, the wealth, if the person is unable to, to function, Uh, what is the, what are the wishes of that individual um, or the family were something to happen to them, but they're, uh, they're not dead, but they're not coming back. Uh, um, They have reached that, stage where they are terminal, uh, but they are uh, not going to recover from that, or just simply unable to do their day-to-day business from a a business standpoint, or even a medical standpoint, make decisions for themselves. So it's a myriad of topics, and one of the most interesting things, it's not very fun to talk about for many people. Right. And that's probably the biggest reason why so many people struggle with getting an estate plan done and staying on top of it as well. Yeah. You know, it's those, it's those topics that you don't really like to talk about that, you know, um, it, it, that just kind of confirms, it just means you got to get it done. You know, it's like you just pull the bandaid off real quick and just get it done, but you want to pull it off with care and caution and doing it the right way. So you don't just go Google how to do an estate plan. You need to make sure that you're getting things done the right way. So let's talk about some of the common issues or from the mistake uh, <laughs> side of things? What do, what do people, you know, maybe mis- make mistakes on when they're starting down the path of planning that estate? Well, I would say the number one mistake in estate planning is not doing it. Yeah. Uh, not being uh, willing to have the conversations with family about what you want done, uh, both prior to death and, a- and after, with your assets, with yourself, um, how you want to be treated, uh, what you want done with your body. Uh, it's difficult conversation, and yet we find that probably the w- number one reason why people haven't done an estate plan is not because they don't think it would be valuable. It's because they don't want to engage in those conversations. What is interesting is that I think some estate planners still rely on kind of an old-fashioned, we'll let you be an adult as a client, and you can uh, have these conversations amongst yourself, but then come in when you're ready. Others actually help facilitate uh, the conversations between um, sometimes a husband and wife, sometimes multiple generations uh, to help people get to the right answers so that that can help them write the proper documents. What's interesting about estate planning is it's really uh, a two-step process. On the one hand, the client has to determine what they want done. And sometimes they just don't understand the parameters of that. Yeah. So a good estate planner can walk through and very slowly get them to understand the, the breadth of everything they're going to be talking about and should be considering uh, what would happen here, what would happen here, what would happen here. And estate planners, unfortunately, have seen it all and they can come up with a myriad of topics. Uh, and most are pretty unrealistic, but, um, but if we can narrow it down to more of the, the most common scenarios, uh, a really good estate planner can work from that and then create documents that essentially um, tell future generations what uh, these individuals want. So I think number one is not doing it. Yeah. A, a, a probably 1A, which is a side note of something you just brought up uh, before you started this, is how many people try to do it themselves? So yeah. 
Colorado is a state that allows something called a holographic will. You can write your own will by hand. You don't have to have it notarized or anything. I think as long as you just, uh, going back to law school 32 years ago, so I think that's, uh, you don't have to have it notarized. But even if you do have it notarized, you can write your own will. You can go to uh, the web and download a form and, and, and sign it. The problem is those documents are not very personalized and most likely are going to be more of a detriment than a positive. But I have met quite a few people who want to do it on their own and they think there's value in doing it on their own. And I guess God bless them. Uh, yep. But having a professional do it, having a professional kind of walk through all the possibilities and, and properly put it on paper, I think is, is critical. Yeah, that's a really good point. And, and you you made comment um, about, you know, having the financial professional helping to facilitate this with the family. And it made me think of something. And I, and I don't know whether this exists or not, but um, it's kind of like the opposite of an intervention where it's like something needs to be done. We're intervening. But what if the uh, financial professional knew that, look, he, there are so many facets of estate planning and there are so many things that need to be decided here. You guys keep putting this off. Let's make this fun. Let's 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 do an event. Let's do a family dinner. I'm going to host it and I'm going to, you know, let's make some fun things. And, and now we're going to, you know, get everyone in the in the right frame of mind to handle this. Um, kind of like when I pay the bills, I'll throw my headphones zone and put it on 80s music because it's like don't like paying the bills, but at least I could be listening to something that I like. So what are some ways that you have found um, helping to encourage families to address this issue to to get it done so that it's done right? Well, it, it's going to depend on the family. We have yeah. had and, and hosted family meetings where we get multiple generations together, um, and they share really what, uh, especially the parents or the top generation kind of shares what they have set up or what they want to set up, and they work with the next generation to find out uh, what uh, you know, what the expectations would be, how willing that next generation would be. Um, there are many examples of, Individuals who have been pulled into estate planning work, executor, uh, personal representative, trustee, very unwillingly and really resent it. It is one of the more thankless jobs. Even if you get paid for it, it's a very thankless job because you're put in the middle. So there are many people who, if given an opportunity, would not want to take that on. And yet they are unilaterally chosen to be these roles by parents or others, um, even other non-family members who just think that they are, are uh, good with money. So uh, I think, you know, having conversations with the family is really critical. I like to just talk about it from, uh, you know, going kind of into the most basic conversation. If something happened to you, what would you want to have happen with your money? Yeah. And you can go back to their values. What's most important to them? Is it family? Is it fun? Is it security? Is it experiences? Well, how do you want that to, to live? How do you want that money to be used to further your values after you've passed away? And that's where you can kind of get deeper into and begin to have conversations about estate planning really without the clients thinking about it that way. And you take really good notes and that becomes the foundation for them of an estate plan moving forward. So uh, there are many ways of doing that, but there's also clients who don't want anybody else to know how much they have. Yeah, um, I have met uh, for multitude of reasons. They don't want to get uh, family squabbling going on. They don't want children to suddenly lose uh, an incentive to work. Um, I have a, a couple, they have done incredibly well for themselves and their children who are also clients of mine have no idea. In fact, the kids are always asking me, you know, are my parents going to be okay? Are they going to have to move into my basement? And I can't yeah. say anything because yeah. the parents right. have asked me not to. Yeah. But, you know, the parents not only will never have to move into your basement, um, you know, you're going to have a pretty easy time once the parents pass away from a financial standpoint. Uh, there's, uh, you're going to be very surprised how much they have. They've done a very good job of being stewards of money. So... Uh, and then, of course, you always have clients who really struggle with having these types of conversations. And those, um, before you get an estate planner involved, you really need to walk them through and be very gentle about the possibilities about uh, what, ha- what would happen if you didn't do this. And that yeah. generally becomes an impetus for clients to actually do it. 
Colorado and many states have what we call intestate laws. If you die without an estate plan, without a will, they will determine who gets your money. They don't take it. There's, there's always this misnomer that the state will come in and take all your money if you die without a will. And that's the last thing that the state wants to deal with. But they're going, they have a hierarchy within the statutes that will tell um, the executor, uh, the courts, exactly who gets what. And sometimes that is not in alignment with what, um, what the individual or the, or the couple want. So that becomes an impetus to do an estate plan, even if it can be emotionally pretty difficult. Yeah. You know, it's it, like you said, you've alluded to a couple times, some of these topics are not exciting topics to talk about. Like, hey, let's talk about the great returns in the market we're seeing right now. This is something that is like, you know, this is what you're dealing with toward the end of and at the end of a life. But it needs to be done because then if you don't do it, guess what happens? <clears throat> it it creates more chaos and confusion and work. So it really is something that is a gift to give to the, your family to make sure that it's done um, up front. You know, just as a, a side note, um, a few years ago, my mom passed away and we had, a, we had a sit down. My mom and dad, and they said, hey, we've taken care of burial plots. We've taken care of living will. We, you don't have to do anything. There's not going to be probates and we're there in a state where there'd be probate and call. And I was like, what a gift that is. You know, and a lot of people don't think of it that way. Yes. And when someone is ill, when someone is sick, when someone passes away suddenly, uh, we just had that happen two weeks ago with a client. We were texting with this or uh, emailing with this person about issues, and we get a call from a month uh, from their daughter Monday morning that they passed away uh, yeah. that weekend with a heart attack. You know, uh, nothing more shocking than when you lose a family member, and to then realize that nothing has been done when it comes to their estate plan. No decisions have been made. Uh, that just adds an inordinate amount of stress. So yes. the more you know, the more you share, the more you communicate, the better off everyone is uh, when difficult times come, and they will. Yes, that's a, excellent. So let's, let's shift over and go, okay, um, when estate planning is done right, what does that look like? Well, an estate plan done right um, is, number one, it is implemented by that, I mean, you can go out and you can pay a thousand, five thousand, ten thousand, or more to have documents created for you, your estate plan. But if you don't implement uh, parts of that, it's worthless. It's yeah. not really worth the paper it's written on. One of the most common examples that we see, um, a very common uh, tactic in estate planning, is to use a trust. Okay. Well, a trust needs to actually have property in it. It's not required, but to be of any value, uh, it has to have property in it. Uh, it could be real estate. It could be securities. It could be retirement plans with the right type of planning. Almost any asset can be put into a trust. And all you're doing is making it far easier for there to be um, ownership change. Essentially, the trust continues to own it own it after death and then either can distribute it or can continue to own, or own it for the benefit of the new beneficiaries, the new generation. But if you don't do the, that work, if the attorney doesn't move the real estate into uh, the trust, if life insurance titles and beneficiaries aren't changed, if, if IRA beneficiaries aren't changed, if that's what is requested or annuity beneficiaries, or if you don't change the title of bank accounts and other accounts securities accounts to the name of the trust, it doesn't go in there. So, um, or it may not. So there can be problems there. And I don't know how many times I have received an estate planning packet from clients that the first thing, when you open it up, it said, these are your next instructions. And it says to do all of those things, to move, open up a bank account for the trust, move all of your securities accounts into trust, change beneficiaries on your life insurance, and this was 10 years ago, and none yeah. of it has been done. So wow. implementing it is really important. I think uh, financial advisors need to be hyper aware of, of this problem and really need to step up and make sure that these things are done. Because this is just something that we do all day long, 
and it's outside of the really the scope of understanding of most clients. And many estate planners will do real estate, but they won't do anything else. They leave it up to the client to solve the rest of it. Wow. Another successful um, part about an estate plan or another uh, component to having a successful estate plan is that you review it. And by this, I mean, you've just poured out your, all of your wants and, and needs to an estate planning attorney, making sure that they translate that into proper terminology is really critical. One of the things that we've done, uh, um, just by uh, the fact that I've gone to law school, I can read an estate plan and have an, an understanding of what it's doing. Um, but I don't know how many times I've read this and I've said, so this is what this estate plan does. And the client says, that's not what I wanted. Uh, no, I wanted this. Well, let's go back to the attorney and, and talk to them and say, you know, am I misreading it or is it, or, or did they mishear it from the client? And a lot of times that's what we find. Yeah. We are dealing right now with a, a client who um, their mother passed away and their daughter is to take some money. And they are concerned that if the daughter gets this, it's going to be um, just an additional disaster for the daughter. So they're trying to do what they can to protect the daughter from taking these funds immediately. And yet we're, we are having discussions, healthy uh, disagreements over the language. Um, the language, uh, in my mind, says that they can do this, uh, but uh, the attorney that wrote it says that that's not what it means. So we are, uh, the parent is looking at it from one one direction, the attorney is looking at it from another direction. So, but, but sure guess that what? what you've actually written in, that, in that scenario right there, the time to deal with this is now, before yes. the event, you know? So that's a really Correct. great aha. Yes, it should have been dealt with before, it should have been dealt with long ago. Um, to have clarity there uh, when it comes to exactly what did you intend and is the document uh, actually stating that. Yeah. So. Well, Chris, I mean, I think that there is so much people need to think about. And like you said, what's the biggest mistake? Not taking action, not starting to get that estate plan put into place. So what are some of the questions people should ask about engaging with Maestro Associates regarding maybe looking at an estate plan? Well, an estate plan is a part, a part of a much larger plan. And generally for us, the estate plan is critical in that it answers questions that clients have and their families have. What happens if? The one thing that we know in life is there is certainty that there will be uncertainty. We never know what's going to happen in the future. We never know when uh, we may pass or have another accident or things may occur in our family. Uh, and so to have a plan that is relatively um, bulletproof when it comes to those actions, that those, those potential outcomes have been thought of and have been addressed and in sometimes codified in, this, in an estate plan is really important to give clients peace of mind. So for us, it's, it really more comes down to if you get these small things done now, you never have to worry about it. And trust us, we will continue to remind you when things need to be updated. Um, I think one of the other big problems that we have is that we'll, we'll look at an estate plan that was written when children were minors, uh, that never really dealt with the level of wealth that the parents have now achieved. Uh, and now we've got children who are adults and in a different place in life, and the parents are in a different place this estate plan needs to be updated, let alone the powers of attorney and living will, but the estate plan itself really needs to be updated. So that's another thing that we are always looking at uh, with our clients, but it is a component to a well-structured financial plan because it gives the clients answers and, and their family answers to questions uh, that are very common. What happens if, and uh, so that's why we, we think it's a, a very important piece. We review estate plans every year, and we recommend that they get updated on a pretty continual basis with their estate planning attorney. Excellent. Well, Chris, as we've said in previous conversations, you know, you guys being fee only, you don't have a dog in the race and you, it's, it's just yeah. giving great advice. And when it comes to the estate plan, you're making sure they've got the full 360 degree, you know, picture of how 
every aspect affects them. So I really uh, feel strongly that people would would receive that well. And so uh, let's just kind of wrap up with what's the best way someone can reach out, connect with you guys, and learn a little bit more about estate planning. Yeah. Well, the best way is to uh, connect with us. Um, you can either connect with us on our website, www.maestro-associates.com. Maestro is M-A-E-S-T-R-O. And our phone number is 303-316-7900. We are very open simply to ask, uh, answering questions for people. Uh, we get clients, uh, or excuse me, prospects or others just asking questions all the time through our website. Uh, you know, would this, is this something I should be concerned with? Uh, should I be thinking about this? Um, and these are topics that we can certainly give answers on. Sometimes they require a few more questions from us to get the right answer, but uh, we're always open to answering questions uh, for anyone. Yes, that's excellent because you know what? If you just answered a question right off the bat without asking clarifying questions, then you're not getting the full picture. So I'm sure people appreciate yeah. follow-up questions, going deeper. So yeah. excellent. Well, Chris, thank you so much for coming on today. It's been a real pleasure talking with you today about estate planning. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it. You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.